upon that cross. Say, I'll never, how never, how much, yes, Lord, just to see, to see my upon. Come on and say, I'll never, I'll, yes, sir. How much it costs, yeah, to see my sins upon that cross. I will never know how, how much. upon the cross yeah. so Lord here we are to worship here we are to yeah here to you're my God you're all together lovely all together All together, all together for to me. Now at this moment, before I get ready to leave, um, I know we have some people that look at football. It was a NFL player that passed out on the field. I didn't get a chance to see what all that took place I looked it up on YouTube and the way how it happened it's kind of like he collapsed he had cardiac arrest and in that moment his heart stopped but once when I saw everybody on the field the team they all came together and they prayed how many believe that something happens when we all come together as one, things begin to change. So all throughout that time, he'd have been in the hospital, unconscious. And I don't know what day it was. I know I seen it on Facebook. He woke up. And what he asked was, who won? And the doctor told him, if, I, if I'm correctly, the doctor told him that he won the game of life. But so when I, when I actually sat there and, I, and you know, and I was really, because he's 24 years old, young kid. And when I thought about that moment when he was on the field, not breathing. One thing that caught in my mind was we don't know when our time come. But each and every day, give God your all. So I'm not saying today is our last day. I, we all don't know. But can we actually just lift up a gratitude of praise that we are here and we breathing? Because there's some people that didn't make it to this day to breathe. So can we just lift up a gratitude of worship, a gratitude of praise that, Lord God, I thank you that I'm still here, that I'm still here, that I'm breathing. Can we lift up a praise that, thank you, Lord, that I'm breathing. I have activity in my limbs. I could have been in the hospital on the dead bed, but Lord, I thank you that I'm here today. This is what God needs right here. This is what he wants right here. No matter what's going on, come on, just lift up a praise to him. He 
kept you when you couldn't even keep yourself. He loved you when you couldn't even love yourself. Come on, just lift up. If you don't have anything else to say, just say, God, I thank you. Thank you for being a healer. Thank you for being a savior. Thank you for keeping me when I couldn't keep myself. God, I thank you. I could have been dead and gone, but God, look where I am. I'm here today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Yes. Yes. Come on, it's so much that he's done for you. Come on, just thank him. I don't know what he's done for you. Come on, thank him. God, I thank you for healing me. I may be going through pain right now, but I'm thanking you in advance that I'm already healed. want to call say thank you lord thank thank you you lord one time just say thank 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 you thank you lord lord i thank thank you Thank you, Lord. And I just, I just want you, Lord. Yes, sir. Oh, you've been, you've been so, so. Has he been good to anybody in this place? Come on, tell him. Lord, you've been so, so good. Lord, you so, so good. Hey, I just want to say I you learn come on one more time everybody say thank you thank you you Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to say, You, Lord. Hey, you say, you say, say my soul. Say my soul. You didn't have to do it, but you did. You say, 
Say my my soul. You say my say my soul. And I just want to say you Lord you made a way you made made a way when there was no way Lord you made a way and I lift my hands and say you made made a made a way when the doctor said no you say yes you made a way We gotta go say I just wanna say I just wanna say I just wanna say you Lord now come on and lift up a praise of Thanksgiving lift up a praise of Thanksgiving in this place Come on and give him praise today. Come on, give him praise today. Come on, prayers. Let's praise God that your children is still here. Come on, children. Let's praise God that your mama is still here. Let's praise him that your daddy is still here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You so worthy. You so worthy. You so worthy. You're so worthy. You're so faithful. And we give you praise. You made a way. with our offerings and our tithes. 
And we thank you that it will be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom. We thank you for every giver, Lord God. Those who don't have to give. Those who are borrowing to give today. We bless you, Lord. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, we, 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 we've been thanking him for making the way. I, I think it's right to do this right here. Just a singer, just a little snip of it. How many know that God is a way maker? How many know he's a chain breaker? Yeah. You made a way. When our backs were against the wall. And it looked as if it was over. You made a way. And we're standing here. It's only because you made. Come on, y'all say, you made, you made. When our bats were, when our bats were. And it looked, and it looked as if it was you made a way and we're standing here it's only because you made a way yes sir you move ah uh, yeah ah uh -huh. That's impossible. Only say you move mountain. Uh-huh. Perform miracles. There is. That's impossible. And we're standing here. Only because say you move mountains, cause walls you cause, perform miracles. There is nothing that's impossible, and we're standing here only because, and we're standing here only because. And we're standing here only Hallelujah. 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 You move mountains. I said you move mountains. You cause walls to fall. Hallelujah. Come on. Has it done anything in your life? Has he changed anything in your circumstances? Hallelujah. We give God all the glory. We give God all the honor. And we give him all the praise. All you have to do is think about the times where you are so low in your situation. And the Lord stood you up in the middle of those situations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the reason that we're still here. He is the reason that we have the movement of our limbs. He's the reason that, that we're breathing. He's the reason that we have breath on the inside of our bodies. Hallelujah. Thank God for Jesus. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Every time I see Sister Easter Brother Jab and Sister Atkins, Deacon Mack, 
Deacon Mack had some recent surgery. All those who have been experiencing challenges in their body and they have had to do some things. And the Lord allows them to come into our service one more time. And then to see Sister Billy start singing a little bit this morning. Hallelujah. Running a little bit this morning. Does something to my spirit. Father, we give you glory this morning. Father, we give you honor. And we give you praise. Father, we thank you for another opportunity to be able to share the word of God with your people. Father, anoint me afresh, Lord God. I want to bring fresh manna to the people of God. Father, anoint me afresh, even now, in the name of Jesus Christ. You are the one who keeps us from falling. There is no failure in you. So, God, whatever we are in need of on this morning, Lord God, bring your word, Lord, to your people. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Give God all the glory for those who have joined us by way of Facebook Live. We have our family who joins us from, from Boston and Atlanta and New York and those who have join us locally. We also know that uh, Elder Kelly and Sister Kelly uh, have been out. We know Sister Kelly uh, had a successful surgery in Jesus' name. And she is home resting. We thank God that he is a healer. He is a way maker. He'll make a way out of no way. Thank God for all of those members who were not able to be here with us today. We, we're in a series uh, called A New Level of Glory. And today I want to speak from the topic of it's time for an upgrade. It's time for an upgrade. And I believe that when those of you who have smartphones, iPhones, or Androids, or whatever device that you have, and it's a, it's a smartphone, I believe that every now and then, you'll get an alert yep. on your cell phone, right. indicating that it's time for an upgrade. Yeah. And those upgrades come routinely, and I believe that th those upgrades come because there's something that they won't program is th in this device to fight against viruses. So there's a software upgrade that comes to allow the cell phone to upgrade yeah, right. to fight against those cyber opportunities out there that's coming to try to destroy what's in the device. And so I believe that it strengthens the device to, to fight against bugs and viruses that come by way of cyber, by way of the internet. So there's multiple upgrades that typically take place in these devices. And I want us to be reminded that every time we gather together, anything can happen. Anything can happen. Every time we gather in praise, and worship, our worship, our praise should elevate because we have another opportunity to be in his presence. I heard Brother Q talk about there's some people who didn't make it through 2022. There's some people who didn't make it from last week, but guess what? You're here. So you still have another opportunity to praise and worship God. So the fact that you're here your praise should all also be upgrading because you're, you still have an opportunity to give God glory. 
Now, I believe that I told the, those who were here with us on yesterday in prayer, what good is a new year with an old you? And I told them yesterday, that sounds a little cliche, but it's a fact. What good is a new year with the old person? There should be some newness. There should be some freshness on the inside of you. There's something that should be stirring up on the inside of you because we're moving in what? Psalm 23. I'm not calling it 2023. I'm calling it Psalms 23 because the Lord is. Come on, y'all help me. The Lord is, and I shall not want. I want to tell somebody, we got to stop playing it safe. God wants you to step out of the boat, start walking on his word in 2003. In Psalm 23, average is not optional. Average is not an option going into, well, we're already in 2023. He no longer wants us to be average. The Bible tells us in Psalms 8 and 1, this is coming out of the New King James Version. It says, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Who has set the glory, thy glory above the heavens. Not good, not average, not ordinary, but excellent is thy name. I want to ask a question. Who's losing because you're not winning in Christ? Who's being impacted because you're not operating in a spirit of excellence? Who's suffering because you won't even get started? God wants us to operate in a spirit of excellence. He no longer desires for us to be mediocre or average or ordinary. He wants us to be excellent because he is excellent. Hallelujah. Bible tells us in Romans 117, this is coming out of the New King James Version, it says, for in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. And I believe when it comes to, when, when, when the scripture talks about faith to faith, it, it, it speaks of progression. It speaks of being progressive, growing, and, and a development of your faith from what? From one degree to another, akin to an ever-increasing glory that we have been experiencing. The Bible tells us in Romans 10, 17, so then faith comes by what? Hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. The prophet Habakkuk prophesied this very thing in Habakkuk 2 and 4. He said, Behold, this soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. So when we talk about going from faith to faith, God wants to, to, to go from faith to faith in a spirit of excellence. He wants us to be growing. He wants us to be developing in our faith. 2 Corinthians 3.18 says this. And we talked about this a couple Sundays ago. It says, but we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being what? Transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord, from glory to glory, an ever-increasing ever glory, which means it's, it's to be continually changed into what you have already created to be. Yeah. It, is, it is to be conformed to His likeness. It is increasing in character, is increasing in the nature of God. It is a progression of our faith. It, it is a progression of glory. 
God wants to, us to go to a new level of glory. He wants to, us to go to a new level in our faith. Does anybody have a desire to go to a new level of glory? Does anybody have a desire to go to a new level of praise? I know it's a little chilly in here, but come on, y'all got to help me this morning. Does anybody have a desire to go to a new level of praise and worship? Does anybody have a desire to go to a new level of glory? Because there's somebody that needs to see that your life is ever changing, it's ever evolving. They need to see progression in your life. They need to see overflow in your life. I'm coming. This is what I, was, I want to say to you. The glory of God looks for a dwelling place. The original house for the glory of God, of course, we know in the Old Testament was the tabernacle. But under the new covenant, the Holy Spirit builds a temple in every believer. The Bible tells us in Corinthians 3.16, it says, do, not, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? We are God's house, His temple. Only this temple is no longer in a fixed location. It it. it it can walk and it can talk and it can teach and it can preach the gospel because the Spirit of God yeah. is on the inside of you. So wherever you go, the Spirit of God is supposed to go with you. you we are the temple of the what? Of the Holy Spirit. And the temple of the Holy Spirit should be in a what? A clean place. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, it's one thing to have the glory, but it's another thing to know how to walk in it. It's another thing, it's one thing to have the glory of God, but it's another thing is to walk out the glory before others while you're in the earth. Here's the good news. You have everything you need on the inside of you to do so. You have everything you need on the inside of you to do so. But the key is, in order for you to go from faith to faith, in order for you to go from glory to glory, in order for you to operate in a spirit of overflow, you have to constantly be developing a relationship. The relationship has to be established. And that means that there's ongoing communication. There's ongoing what? Studying of, our, of God's Word. Not only studying the Word of God, but putting what you are learning, of course, into practice. And as we study the Word of God and as we experience the, 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 the Word of God, and, and as it becomes reality in our lives, He begins to take us from glory to glory. He begins to step us up to a new level of where we should already be. And I want to give a quick example in Matthew of what Peter was experiencing. Let's go to Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14 verses, I'm going to start at verse 22. I'm going to be reading this out of the NIV version of the Bible. And this is, of course, a familiar story. It's been teached, it's been preached uh, multiple ways. Uh, the Bible says in verse 22, it says, Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side. While he dismissed the crowd, after he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone. And the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Verse 25 says, shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. 
when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and, and, and cried out in fear. Look at, what, look at what it says in verse 27. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Look at, look at, look at what, what's happening here. He said, Lord, if it's you. Peter replied. Now, okay, here, here's where. Here's where it says, it says, Lord, if it's you. Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Verse 29 says, come, he says. Verse 29 says, come, he said. Now, I want you, I want, I want you to be reminded of something. Peter had a relationship with the Lord. You remember in Luke 5, I believe it was, I believe it was 5, Luke 5, 3, where it talks about how Peter, how, how Peter got, how, how Jesus got into one of the boats, the one belonging to what? Simon Peter. And he asked him to put out a little from the shore. Remember, we talked about how Jesus decided to choose Peter's boat. He didn't choose the other folks' boat. He chose Peter's boat. Okay? I want you to think about that. He chose Peter's boat. And then in, in Matthew 8, 14 and 15, we don't have to go there, but Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law. Put Matthew, put, 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 I didn't give you all this, but put Matthew... Uh, chapter 8, 14, and 15 up really quickly. You can put it up in, you can put it up in the NIV verse. I want to establish with you the relationship that Peter had with Jesus. Put that up for me real quick. I know I didn't, I didn't give you all that. Matthew 8, verses 14 and 15. Why, why are they getting that up? Jesus won't tell you to do something that's impossible. Because Jesus told Peter to come. He told Peter to come. He didn't tell Peter to come because he didn't think Peter could do, couldn't do it. So the Lord is speaking to you about something. You understand? He's not going to tell you something that to do if it's not impossible. It says, look, look at verse 14. It says, when Jesus came into Peter's house, he saw Peter's mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. We'll go to 15. He touched her hand, and the fever left her. And she got up and began to wait on him. So, so Peter has a relationship. He's seen what God can do. You understand? Peter, when he was on the boat, he got in Peter's boat. We, talk, we talked about that a, a couple Sundays ago where Peter said, Lord, we've been, doing, we've been fishing all night long. But what did Jesus say? Cast out your net. And guess what Peter did? He followed the instructions that God was given. And we know, we know the story. When, when Peter cast the net, Peter was able to call his partners who were in a, another boat because overflow was taking place. But Peter was selected. Peter was in a relationship with the Lord. And even before, even before this, Jesus fed the 5,000. So the miracles, signs, and wonders was taking place. Peter was in a relationship with the Lord. So why was it Peter who was called out of the boat? Why did Peter step out of the boat? Why all the, all the other disciples, they were in the boat too. Why was it Peter that stepped out of the boat? Why was it him? Because Peter was in a relationship with God. He was in a relationship with Jesus. He knew what Jesus can do personally. And that's where we have to be. We have to know what Jesus can do on a personal level. Because God wants to take us to a new level of glory. But it, 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 what that means is that we have to be in a relationship with the most high God. So he said, I, I'm getting a little background noise, Deacon Darius. He said, Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, 
tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. So, and, 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 and when I was studying this, and I told those in prayer on yesterday, yes, Peter got out of the boat. But Peter got out of the boat on God's word. He stepped out on God's word. He stepped out on come. So essentially, yeah, he, he, the results of his obedience and his faith, he, he eventually walked on water. But he first walked on the word. He took a step based on what God spoke, what Jesus spoke. He said, come. He stepped out on come. He stepped out on what Jesus said. He followed the instructions. Now, Peter could have easily said, because everybody else is in the boat and nobody's moving. But Peter, everybody else was terrified. Everybody else thought it was a ghost. Everybody else cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. It is, he said it was him. He said, don't be afraid. But the only person that stepped out of the boat, the only person that said, Lord, if it's you, was Peter. Peter had a relationship. Not to say that the other disciples didn't have a relationship, but as I look in Scripture, there were a lot of instances where Peter was in commune with God. And that's why Peter was the one that said, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come. Why did none of the other disciples say the same thing? Or, or why didn't the other disciples follow Peter? Why? Peter saw a glimpse of glory. Peter saw the glory of God walking on the water. Peter responded to God's glory. Peter responded to what he saw. He wasn't concerned about what the others thought. He was looking at God's glory. And a lot of times we're so concerned with people. We can't be concerned, and sometimes it's the people that's close to you. Because the disciples were close. They were, in, they were together in the boat. We can't get distracted by people. We got to focus on what the Spirit of God is saying to us. And sometimes we got to step out, even if it means we got to step out all by ourselves. We got to take a step. And as you take a step, God will give guidance, God will give instruction. But you got to take one step. Lord, if this is you, show me something, tell me something. And when he tells you, when he gives you the instruction, don't just stand there. Do what God is instructing you to do. When, when the Lord told Peter, cast out your net. Well, God, we've been doing this all day. Cast out your net. I'm going to follow your instructions. I ca I'm casting the net. And when Peter cast the net, overflow came. When we follow God's instruction, no matter how crazy it may be, we got to follow the instructions that God is given. It says, then Peter got down out of the boat and walked on water and came towards Jesus. And, and, and the teaching on this is, of course, and it's true that Peter stepped out of the boat, and it was a, of course, the, it was a storm. The water was already raging. The, 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 it was, the water was already rocking back and forth. The wind was blowing. The water wasn't calm. You understand? So he stepped out of the boat, a safe place. 
He stepped out of the boat, which was a safe place. It was, he was in the boat with people that he were familiar with. He was in the boat with people that he knew. But outside of the boat, storms were raging. So sometimes when we step into a situation, it may be, it may be a little rocky. It may be a little stormy, but we got to what? Still step out into what? If, if Jesus is telling you to step out no matter how it looks, no matter how it may seem, no matter what you're experiencing, you got to step out in faith. Because that is an example how, how Jesus was taking Peter to a new level of glory. Remember, Peter had already experienced the things of God. Now this is the next level of glory. And see, Jesus, this guy's so good to me. When Peter stepped out into the storm, he wasn't concerned about the storm. And, and that's what we have to, we, have, we can't be concerned about the storm that we're in. We have to be uh, focused on the presence of God. He was more focused on God's glory and God's presence than the storm. A lot of times we focus on the problem too much. And not God's glory. We focus on what's, we focus on our limitations. God wants you to focus on his presence. Yeah. 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 Peter was focused on God's presence and God's glory because what? The, Jesus was walking on the water. But Jesus, Peter got out of the boat because Peter, because the Lord wanted, wanted the others in the boat to see. They wanted them to see that Okay, I, you, you've seen the miracles and the signs and wonders that I've, I've performed. You've seen me feed the, the 5,000. All these things had already taken place, right? Not only do I want you to see me walking on the water, I want, I want you to see somebody just like you right. doing what I'm doing. <sighs> he wanted the disciples in the boat to see Peter doing the same thing that he was doing. Because the Spirit of God is on the inside of us. We have that same power. We have that same authority to do what God is what? Calling us to do. He wanted the other disciples to see, I'm going to show you one just like you that can do what I do. Not saying he's Jesus. Don't get me wrong. He's not Jesus. But I'm going to show you if you focus on me. I'm going to show you God's glory. He was trying to get, I'm Peter. That's the boat. He wanted them to see Peter. They had already saw Jesus, and they were in fear. But when Peter stepped out, come on, y'all got to get with me on this. When they saw Jesus, they thought Jesus was a ghost. Now, when Peter stepped out and was doing the same thing, what did they think about Peter? Peter, come on, y'all got to get with me. Peter was in the boat with them. Come on, y'all got to hear me. So what Jesus was trying to do, I'm not, you know, you know what, you think I'm a ghost. Let me do this to Peter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me show you that one just like you could do what I'm doing. Because he wanted them to see the reality of God's glory. Yeah. Through one just like him. Yeah. Just like them. Amen. That's why Peter stepped out of the boat. Because God, because Jesus wanted them to see, guess what? You think I'm a ghost, but guess what? The same person that was just sitting with you in the boat is now doing the same thing that I'm doing. All things are possible to them that believe. So when Peter got out of the boat, he got out on God's glory. He got out on God's word. And he wanted to take the disciples who were in a safe place to a new level of glory because of what they saw in Peter. As so it be with some of you. Jesus wants to use some of you as an example of God's glory. Just like he used Peter to show the disciples he wants to do the same thing with you. He wants you to be an example yeah, yeah. of God's glory. I was going to bring a ladder today. 
because God wants to take us to a new level of glory. And as you step up the ladder, the view changes. As you take steps to a new level of glory, you don't take even steps. You take steps up because God wants to show you something new. That's why I said, how excellent is thy name? God wants excellence. He wants to take us to a new level of glory. This entire campus is going to change. It's going to transform. This entire campus is going to transform. We, as people, are going to transform because we're going to be submitted to God's glory. And we're going to do things that people haven't seen before. The disciples never saw one of their own walk on water. That's what Jesus wants to do here at Truth Church. He wants to show people things that they've never seen before. And he doesn't want people to operate in fear. He wants people to see the reality of God's glory. And the only way he can, the people can really see the reality of God's glory is they see the glory of God, Sister Pringle, in you. That same glory that was on Jesus as he was walking on the water was on Peter. He wanted them to see excellence. He wanted them to see glory. That's what he wants to see in us. But we're not going to get to that level doing things halfway. Peter didn't get to that level of, 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 of him saying, Lord, if it's you. He didn't get to that place by not having a true relationship with Jesus Christ. Why was it Peter's, why was it Peter's mother-in-law that was, that was healed? Why was it Peter the one that Jesus selected when he said, hey, I'm going to get in your boat and I'm going to show that. Come on, y'all got to understand what I'm saying. Y'all got to get the correlation. God, J- Jesus stepped into Peter's boat. Why, did, why, did, why didn't he step into the other boat? Why, why did he select the other disciples? Why, why, why did he do that? When they came, and this is a whole, this is kind of, I'm giving you another example. When, when they came for Jesus, why was Peter the one that chopped a joker ear off? When Judas betrayed Jesus with a kiss, and they realized that that was Jesus, what did Peter do? He came, he did what? He chopped the joker ear off. Why was it Peter that did that? Peter was in a relationship with the Lord. And we know that Peter denied Jesus. We we know that. But even in his denial, Jesus came back. Feed my lambs. Come on. Because Peter was in a relationship. Even in his denying him, he still was in a relationship with God. Yeah, we're going to make mistakes. But if your heart is right, God wants to take you to a new level of glory. Y'all got to feel me this morning. He wants to take us to a new level in him. You can't be the same person you were in 2022. No way. God wants to do something new in you. You can't sit there and be the same person you were last year. Some of us sit there sometimes like God had done anything in our lives. We are wallowing in self-pity. You can't wallow in self-pity. You got to get up and step out into God's glory. While you're wallowing in self-pity, somebody's life is hanging in the balance. Jesus was using Peter as an example to the people that was closest to him. And the Lord wants to do the same thing with you all. Get out of the boat. Get out of the boat. I'm about to get on the floor. (laughs) Get out of the boat. Get out of the boat. Get out of the boat. Peter, Latoya, was not focused on the wind and the waves Uh and the storm. He was focused on God's glory. He was not focused on the storm. Don't magnify the storm. Magnify God's glory. 
magnify God's presence. Even when you're going through. Even when everything around you is going bad, it's, I mean, just one thing after another, magnify God's glory. In spite of the way you may be feeling, give him honor. Tell him how much you love him. He's going to come through. <laughs> Weeping may endure for a night, but joy, 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 hallelujah, joy comes in the morning. At some point, every day that we live, darkness shall fall. But guess what? The light is going to come. Every day that we live, darkness falls, but light comes in the morning. You may be in a dark place, but God's glory is always ever present in your life. It's going to be up to you whether you connect to God's glory. He wants to connect you to connect to his glory. Get out of the boat. You will never know what you're truly capable of until you step out. If you stay in the boat with the disciples, you will never know what you're truly capable of. Peter would have never known that he could walk on God's word because that's what he did first. He would have never known that he could walk on water until he stepped out of the boat. You will never know what you're capable of until you step into a new level of glory. It's time for an upgrade. It's time for an upgrade. It's time for a new you, Sister Lucia. It's time for a new you. I don't care about them wheelchairs and that walker. God don't care about that. He cares about the fact that you're here. That you're in the presence of the people. In, in, in spite of the way you feel, you're still giving God glory. You're still opening up your mouth. Hallelujah. He don't care about that. He can use you, Sister Cassandra. He can use you, Sister Easter. He can use y'all. He can use you, Sister Atkins. He can use you, Deacon Matt. Huh? He can use you, brother. Yes, he can. Get out of the boat. All right, it's 957. Great day. Of course, y'all already done preached them. Wake, wake you at. Hallelujah. Come on. I got so much Jesus. Look what he says. Look what it says. In verse 31. It says immediately. Immediately. Even as, even as Peter stepped out of the boat. And we know that Peter took his eyes off of the glory. And he began to sink. But guess who didn't sink? Jesus. <sighs> Says, let me back up to 30, but when, the, when he saw, let me, back, let me back up a little bit. When he saw the wind, he was afraid. And was beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You know why Jesus reached out his hand and caught him? Because Peter was in a relationship with Jesus. God already knew that he was going to get out of the boat. God already knew that he was going to get distracted, distracted. But Peter had a relationship. God already knew that Peter was going to deny him three times. But God also knew that Peter would chop a joke with all for Jesus. You follow what I'm saying? So regardless of what was happening here, at least Peter stepped out on me. And that's all God is saying. He wants to take us to a new level. He wants us to go to a new level. The only person that is stopping you from going to a new level is who? Is you. 
Listen, the text doesn't say this, but nobody grabbed Peter and said, Peter, don't do it. The disciples in the boat, they ain't, Peter, don't, don't, jump out, don't, don't jump out in the storm. You're going to drown. That storm going to swallow you up. You can't do what Jesus can do. Oh, y'all not catching me. The people in the boat, it doesn't, it doesn't say what they were doing. All, it's, all it says is Peter was the one. So whatever was being said, if it was anything being said, you follow what I'm saying? I'm implying this, but it, but it, but it could be they were trying to stop him from getting out of it. It could be. The text doesn't say that. But now I use my wife as an example. If we at, we, we, I, use, I use Myrtle Beach. If we at Myrtle Beach, you understand? And we're in the middle of, of, of the ocean. I know my wife can't swim. You understand? Now, if she get on the edge, she's going to jump out. I, I'm going to have a problem with that. Because even though she may have a life jacket on, I'm still going to be concerned. I'm going to try to stop her. Honey, <laughs> you don't need to do that. <laughs> Come on back in this boat. You understand? Because I don't want anything to happen to her. I just, just think about it. The disciples, they're already afraid. Remember when Jesus came walking on the water, they say they, say it, they thought it was a ghost. So they're already panicking. Now one of their own stepping out, telling me he's going to step out into the ocean in the middle of the storm. Well, all I'm saying is, if the disciples were, was trying to pull Peter from stepping out into the boat, I mean, stepping out into the water, he didn't let the people around him stop him from stepping out in faith. That's what I'm saying. You can't let the people that you may be connected to stop you from fulfilling the assignment and the call that God has upon your life. You got to go out. You got to step out and do what God is calling you to do. That's what we have to do. We have to be just like Peter. We have to focus on God's glory. That's what we have to be focused on. We got to be focused on him. It says that immediately Jesus reached out his hand and called him. You have a little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? Verse 32 says, and when they climbed into the boat, here it is. Here, here's what I want to conclude with. When they climbed into the boat, here's where the upgrade takes place. It's time for an upgrade. <sighs> and when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat, those who were in the boat, those who were in the boat worshiped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. But see, I believe it took Peter being the example for them to get to a place where they truly understood that Jesus is the Messiah. You just saw me feed 5,000. You just saw me heal all these people. You just saw these miracles that I had performed before you, but you still don't believe. So it took Peter. It took Peter, one of their very own, getting out and doing what was impossible. And that's what God wants to do with you all. He wants to use you to show somebody else the impossible. He wants to use you to show others in your own family, on your job, in the community, yeah. that all things are possible to them that believe. That's why some of us in this room have been promoted on positions that we're not qualified for. And the people around us say, how in the world did Sister Latoya, how in the world did Brother Todd get this promotion? Well, he's not even qualified. What God is doing, he's showing the people that are in the boat, that all things are possible. To them that believe, he's showing the people in the boat that, hey, 
you got to worship the God that did this for me. The only way, let's stand to our feet, the only way that we get to that level, the only way that we get to the next level of glory it's time for an upgrade. In 33, they did all that for the Lord to reveal to them, for them to say truly, you are the Son of God. God desires for all of us, including myself, to go to a new level of glory. Can't go to a new level of glory. You can't be upgraded if you're not spending the time with the one who's responsible for the upgrade. You can't just expect for things to happen when you're not in communion with the Father. You can't just expect miracles, signs, and wonders to occur if you're never getting on your knees and if you're never getting in your closet and bowing down and saying, for Lord, I live. Lord, I'll do whatever you have commanded me to do. Lord, I'll follow your instructions. Lord, I thank you for transitioning me to a new level. Father, I'm going to be obedient to your word. I'm going to do what you have instructed me to do. I see all the examples in your word of how you dealt with the people. Father, I'm going, I'm going to submit to your commands. If you never spend that time, that intimate time with, with the one who created you, you will not go to a new level of glory. God wants to upgrade us. God wants to, God wants to download something in our spirit that's never been there before. But you got to get out of yourself and let God use you, use you in a way that he's never used you before. There's some things that people have been thinking about. Yeah, I, you know, I, I need to be operating in this. But the people, in some cases that have been close to me, have held me back. Peter didn't allow the people that were close to him to hold him back from stepping out on faith. Because it was because of Peter, Peter's step, that the other disciples truly understood in that moment that, yeah, he is the Messiah. And all I'm saying is people need more evidence that God is real. And as you, gr as you grow and as things take place in your life, you're giving other people evidence that God is real. So if you know that you've been waddling and you haven't been doing what the Lord has been, has been revealing to you, that you haven't been spending the time in the Word and praying, you know you haven't been doing those things. God wants to do that. The good news is you have an opportunity. That's the good news. The good news is we're still here, so we still got an opportunity to get to a level of glory. And we, we're supposed to be ever evolving until Jesus comes back and we check one or the other. But God wants to take us to a new level of glory. He wants to upgrade us. He wants to download something in our spirit so people can see true evidence 
that God is real because he's real to you. And no matter what you experience in life, you are an overcomer. You are more than a conqueror. The Lord wants to do something special in Psalm 23. The Lord wants to do something special in Psalm 23. He wants to take us to new levels of glory. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy. He wants to do something that even your enemies are going to conform because you've changed. If anybody is desiring to go to a new level of glory, I want you to come to the altar. I want you to come. Go ahead, Q. Give me something. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I shall not want. Hallelujah. Oh, my soul, got a shepherd in the valley, and I shall not want. I shall not want. I shall not want. Because my cup's running over, running over. I shall not I shall not want. I shall not want. Oh, my soul's got a shepherd in the valley, and I shall not want. I shall not want. I shall not want. Cause my cup's running over, running over. I shall not want. So, the, so the Billy, I want you to come. I want you to come up here. Hallelujah. Man, I'm so grateful for the for the anointing that God has in this house. Hallelujah. I'm so grateful for the teaching that we have received. Those of you who have been faithful. God wants to take you to a new level of glory. I want, I want Sister Billy just to share and pray whatever's on our heart. God has a powerful work on the inside of you. And I want Sister Billy to pray over those who have come to the altar. the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Each of you knew, know what's in your heart. You know where you are. And I shared this morning that the Lord spoke a word to me last night, positioning. Only you can position yourself to be ready for the glory of God, that next level. Some of us have to go deeper. As we go higher, we're going deeper in the spirit. It has to be done by the spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. The word says, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Glory to God. So as I pray out loud, you pray in your heart. You tell God, because he sees where each of us are. He sees us. He knows. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you today, Lord God. We praise you and honor you. We continue to honor you, Lord God, with our lives. As we gather at the altar, Father, we have heard the word. We've heard you speak. We've heard the spirit of the Lord. If there's anybody here who needs salvation, Father, we pray that you would deal with their hearts today, that they would be willing to confess you as Lord and Savior.
that they would know that you died on the cross for them, Lord God, that you shed your blood, that you died and you rose three days later. Glory to God so that we can walk in newness of life. Father, you're calling us out of the world. Hallelujah. A deeper presence of you. Thank you, Lord God, that as Moses came out of your presence and the glory was fading away, he put a veil over his face. But the word says that when we come into Christ, that the veil is removed. Hallelujah. And the glory, the glory of the presence of God shines through. Thank you, Lord. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way today in each of these people, Lord God. These people of yours, Father. Have your way today. Continue to anoint us, Lord God, afresh. Continue, Lord God, to speak in us. We hear you, Lord God, and we're willing to position ourselves to receive the greater glory. We thank you, Lord God, that our families will see the glory of the Lord. Healings will take place. Glory, salvations will take place. People will be crying out, what must I do? Hallelujah. We thank you. And we'll give you all the glory. All the glory. All the dominion belongs to you. You are sovereign God. Hallelujah. Your kingdom come. Yes, you are. Your will be done yes, sir. on earth as it is hey, in heaven. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Yeah, God. Yeah, God. Deal with hearts, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's calling us out of the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's calling us out. Hallelujah. 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 Let your neighbor know if you need to be saved today. Hallelujah. Really saved. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, Miles. Come here, Miles. Come here real quick. Run. Come here. Come on. Come on. Hustle, hustle, hustle. Hustle, hustle, hustle. Hustle, hustle, hustle. Come on. Come on, young man. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, Miles. Come on up here, up here, up here. Stand up here with me. Miles Ma told me you want to preach this word. I want him to stand up here with me as we close out. Wait, it's, it's hard beating. It's beating fast. When, when a child says something, Any, any one of us who wants to step out, even, even, even a small child, we got to make a way. Because see, what I'm doing with him is I don't want him to be fearful. Because last time I asked him to do this, he didn't want to come. But this time, this time he came. Amen. So I want him to stand up here with me as we close out. Thank you so much. Sister Billy. Sister Easter. Your latter days. Sister Easter, your latter days will be greater than your former days. And Brother Jap, man, you've been right by your wife's side. Man, I'm telling you, man, how you have provided for your favor. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor with the Lord. Men, we got to take care of our favor.
come hell or high water, we take care of our faith. Hallelujah. Thank God, all of you. And just really quickly, if someone, any one of us, desires to, to join, those of you online as well, to join True Church Ministries, we're not a perfect church. Nothing perfect about this church. Because we in this church, <laughs> and none, including myself, none of us are perfect. Todd, you know, you know me, brother. You know me for a long time. You know none of us are perfect. But you you can see what God has done compared to where we were. <laughs> compared to where we were. Thank God for his grace, man. Thank God for his mercy. So if anybody desires to to join True Church and Ministries, you can let that be known by showing your hands since everybody's at the altar. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Give God some glory. Wow. My God. I want want you all to get with uh, Brother Leroy Barnett and Sister Billy, who is responsible for our new members orientation. Touch base with them right after we're, we're done, and they'll give you some. They'll give you some direction. Come on, man! Give God some glory for that. Yeah. 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 Awesome God! Awesome God! Man, we come a long way. Boy, I could tell. I could tell you all, Todd. Don't do it, man. We can, man, we can tell you some stories, but we thank God for His goodness. Thank God for his goodness. Mm. So as we close out in prayer, thank God for his goodness. Thank God for his mercy. May the peace of God be upon you this day and forevermore. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name, Brother Miles. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, Q. Let the church say amen, bro. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. Come on. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God is spoken. Let the church say amen. Greet somebody. Give somebody a word of encouragement. Let them know you love them. God bless you all. Those of you who have joined us by way of Facebook Live, we love you. May heaven smile upon you as well and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>